Okay, a bit difficult to start on a topic so important. And I think there are justices sitting there today pondering a little bit. The International Court of Justice and South Africa and Zionist Israel and the very competent, very, very competent layout of genocide put on the table while the UK and the USA attack Houthis in foreign lands, in foreign lands, on behalf of Zionist Israel. And Australia sits back on the sidelines while committed to an AUKUS agreement, an AUKUS agreement. Submarines and stuff that they manipulate over the money supply and fail to give us any substantial defence capabilities. Any substantial defence capabilities, Albo? Now, and we look at all of this, well, while Israel is clearly, very, very clearly, uh, after over, over 112 complaints driven through the United Nations uh, and a plethora of evidence that given the history of British Palestine, the history of what's going on globally. See, we don't look at a, a single country, do we? We look at power plays that are going on. Now, South Africa, South Africa, oh, what's its rule and line of authority in this play? Because you have this ANC Republic, Republic, where'd it come from? Why did it arrive? How did it arrive? Did it arrive in the same manner that Elbo tried to push a referendum and attempt to undermine God, attempt to undermine the line of authority into something? Would the same thing have happened to South Africa? Would exactly the same thing have happened to South Africa? Uh, and would that be why South Africa has some sort of standing in this matter against some Zionist state? Against some Zionist state, g given its heritage in Queen Victoria? Given its heritage in Queen Victoria? So we look at these war crimes, don't we, Albo? Uh, and your connections to power players outside of the line of authority in this commonwealth, in this very commonwealth. So we look at this WEF versus Zionist power play on the table right now. And we look at a line of authority that has a founding in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Spirit. We'll read some Bible in a second to sort of demonstrate this point. But on an international stage, we have those Zionists manipulating and controlling this country, don't we? We have those Zionists pushing their monetary supplies around the world. But we also have this link back to Freemasons. And it all comes back to this Keeping you in the dark from the world you're supposed to live in so that you forget it, lest ye forget, lest ye forget. And over the last hundred years, you've forgotten. Because if you tried to explain it to me, you can't, can you? And when we look at the International Court of Justice and a line of authority, and we look at administration and Criminal Code, the Criminal Code, Book 2, Volume 2, right, it's all in there, just go and have a look on the legislative website and you'll be able to see, apartheid is against the Criminal Code in the Commonwealth of Australia and that's what we've seen over the last two years, this is a similar modus 
operandi to South Africa. Who was behind that? Who was behind that? Dividing some sort of empire and then turning into a colonialist, right, from that empire. This is the manipulated brain thought. Did a foreign crown come in and then make everyone blame you? Make everyone blame you for what they did to you? And then there's this claim of defence, defence, defending the country, right? Defending the national security, defending the national interest, the beneficial interest, defending it. Is, is defence the price of a home going from 100 grand to 1.3 million? Is that defence? No, that's the monetary supply being manipulated to the benefit of those in power over those that aren't. How's that defence? Now, no one can afford a home in your country. No one can afford food in your country. And you're telling me you've defended? What have you defended? For who? Did you defend an administration to pay off some sort of national debt? While the people of this country were mind played into creating that debt continuously? creating that debt continuously uh, on behalf of people that are committing genocide across the world right now that are linked to this very Australian parliament itself, that are linked to this very Australian parliament itself by line of authorities and debt and credit structures. There is not a line of authority to your ANZAC in what sits in the Parliament. Isn't that right, Pauline Hanson? You don't work for any sort of line of authority that forged in the ANZAC. You work for a foreign administrating power under Great Seal of Australia, at which is connected to this monstrosity that is committing genocide across the world right now. We could call it Orcusrail. Couldn't we? We could call it AUKUS RAIL. Money men with bombs who don't want to relinquish control when they've been told to have no line of authority to hold it. Elbow. No line of authority to hold it with God. And there's your problem. You're starting to wake up to the fact your ANZAC laid down the law. Not me. See, so we talk about a few things and we start to realise something. We start to realise something. And that might be the fact that a line of authority and a right to speak in the matter might actually have something to do with it. And then you come to realise something else. The district of the British. The district of the British. I is a true copy of, the entry of, birth of. Her Britannic Majesties, witnessed by my hand and seal. Johannesburg. And in this you find the crown watermark. And the crown stamp. So, please enlighten me to as to why these two documents are separated from each other at the birth, the entry of the birth, the entry of the birth. Okay, and if we come up here, when and where born, born, registered birth, born. 
so we come to this one, don't we, Albo? This Australian citizen ship. Right, and here's the interesting fact for everyone else. Born. Born. And capitalised. And this was given to me on the bicentenary 26th of January 1988. It was formally issued the day before because it was a public holiday. Right, but we come down here. Minister. Minister for Immigration and Citizenship. Not the Crown. Not the Crown. Not born and registered into a consular or Crown office. Sealed by some government office. So here's the difficult thing for the Australian government. Given that on the court record is defined a line of authority and an actual war crime committed by the state of New South Wales and its corrective services, the state of New South Wales. Uh, and then that could be defined under the Criminal Code, Volume 2, within their codified law, their codified law. But you start to see now, there's a larger connection to a world at play you haven't even looked at. We've argued all of these fines and silly things. You're now starting to see the stage become front and centre. South Africa are very correct in what they speak in relation to former British Palestine. Former British Palestine. And then when you look at the Commonwealth of Australia and what I've laid out in evidences, it's very apparent what's going on. It's a divide and conquer and a manipulation monetarily so that you forget yourselves, totally forget yourselves, all around the world in this veil of Siddham uh, at which the anchor needs to be grounded before you sink with all of this stuff that's going on and financially won't be able to prop yourselves up as those people anymore and they dissipate and they become no more, become no more. And we aren't willing to let that happen, are you? Are you willing to let that happen? Just become nothing? Become nothing? When we could have put a stick in the ground and made nothing, everything, at law? Because this, this fits the tables now. The, the governing forces that don't have a line of authority in the matter are, are facing crippling situation internationally on a world stage. You are nothing. Right? And this was the threat to them and their cohorts and everyone that was sucked in blindly to follow this stuff. You will own nothing. He's going to cripple it all. Cripple all of it. All right? And you're starting to see that while the crippled have resorted to military warfare as their last bastion of hope while legally on the table legally worldwide with the Hague conventions and order of things it's impossible for them to retain any sort of legal line of authority in any matter in any matter any matter you'll own nothing uh, and this was the warning sink with the kraken let the Kraken pull down all the ships, all of them, leaving you, the age of entitlement is over, right? You, you spent it all, locusts and honey, you, you consumers, so you're the locusts that ate everything that was left, and, and then the honey was this scripture that came along and said, oi, don't you remember how your country was formed? And those are the bitter truths, you know, the honey. It's sweet to taste in here, but it's bitter to swallow, or it's, it hurts in your tummy. And this is what John brought forward, 
as he was the first arm to Christ. And then when Christ appeared, all was locked into play, wasn't it? And defined, which linked the line of authority to all these things. And now you watch South Africa on a world stage that had some sort of lineage as well in this matter, and the choices of this ANC or this banker colonialism or the former defence that it was previously. A world has been mind manipulated for over a century to turn in on itself and become its own worst enemies. And that's the cause of these mind manipulators, these delusionalists, these Kabbalists, these Jewish mysticists, these Freemasons that, that hold this world knowledge of how things are from you, this primary education that you're supposed to learn as a child, you don't get taught. And then you get taught to become their fodder in their machine for their dollars. And then it's very hard to get out of that trap, isn't it? It's very hard to reverse that trap, isn't it? The dependence trap is reality because most people sign into a 40-year mortgage, don't they? Instead of adventuring the world. And then they end up going to a slave job and pay tax for that because they're taking from this monetary arm to pay this mortgage, the dependence wheel, and it's the rat race, isn't it? It's the rat race, isn't it? And that becomes the harsh reality here, is that now you put fences up and you don't know your neighbours. Whereas 50 years ago, you really hardly had those fences and you knew everyone. And now it's very difficult to convey this across, isn't it? And when you look at a world stage and this deluded mind manipulation to follow this rat race instead of look at what reality is with a money lender in the temple, the country, the town, your own home, and you start to realise this evil stuff when they trick you into thinking that the normality is their cage, their cage, the rat race. Because that's very hard to get out of, isn't it? It's, you get to 40, 50 before you realise that you can change that path a little bit, but you're still stuck in this rat race. And that's the hard part to look at. And, and that's where Isaiah, the book of Isaiah in the Bible, this gives you this progressing forward motion to fixing your country, to fixing your country, right? Jeremiah gave you the downfall of to how you got here today. And if you look at then at Isaiah, you're looking at the bring it back up instead of wallowing in sorrow while with partners threaten Zionists that they'll owe nothing. And they will because it's the coming to the end of this administrative game where at international law, you, you can't administer something if you don't have a right to administer it. And your creditors come in and wipe your monetary supply out, then you literally do own nothing. Nothing. Right? Anyone that ever believed in that false reality will sink with it. Totally sink with it. And it's where Elbow and the you know, different sides, factions of Parliament, the Abbott side and the Menzi side versus this Elbow and the Rainbow People side, and you're starting to see this reality as they all try and clamber for. And it's all going to collapse because God brought an anchor. God brought an anchor at which you can all believe in properly without shadow of doubt, without shadow of doubt, at which then you remember and are able by your amulet or sigil to get back home, without shadow 
of a doubt. Think about the words in the sentence as well, uh, as you put your circle down on the ground in your town and become the people that fulfill that circle, fulfill that circle in the eyes of God, right? And this is the unfortunate reality as your money men that have propped all of this false reality up for the last 75 years ago and longer collapse around you, collapse around you uh, and turn to the guns instead of God, right? And God is guns, don't get me wrong, because that's defense of you once you realize without shadow of a doubt where home is, where home is. And th this is what's being discussed in the ICJ right now. Right now, this Palestinian land, isn't it? Zionist Israel is merely a threatening terrorist organization following in the footsteps of Eaton Livni. They bomb everything to get their way. They bomb everything to get their way. They don't care about the truth. They use a false reality to sink all the ships. And that's the warning in the Bible that Trump held up at the Church of Presidents, remember? He stood there at the Church of Presidents and used all of those police to push the protesters back while he walked up for a photo opportunity with a Bible. With a Bible. With a Bible. Uh, and these are very stark and real and loud messages to players around the world like kings and presidents and emperors and pharaohs and you get what I'm saying, Caesars and all these things. And this reality is very apparent to you on a world stage with South Africa voicing itself, knowing it has a history with the British Empire and British Palestine. And then that puts those Zionists on the other side of the table, doesn't it? On the other side of the table, doesn't it? And uh, maybe they were responsible for some sort of monetary depression in a republic of South Africa, just like a Commonwealth of Australia, uh, under some sort of great seal of Australia, you're starting to see that monetary powers have managed and controlled states that belong to God in the absence of us being with mind, with mind, lost at Holy See in a delusion at which we find our way home and stop being deluded by all this foreign and false reality around us. Foreign and false reality around us. And, and that can only be done through that Bible, can't it? By anchoring one's realm through one's circle in the town with the townsfolk called your neighbours. Love thy neighbour, right? Love thy neighbour. You might all be missing something as you progress forward in your misguided anger, in that these peacekeepers are your enemy when they keep the peace. Keep the peace. And it's up to you to figure out that peace is death. And it's up to you to figure out that as a country and a town, you have to strive to work your way out of that by walking away and surrendering and rendering unto. But without any foundation, without any foundation, what have you rendered unto God? Read the passage. All right, so we said we'd have a look at the Bibles. And we, we come down. Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and brother 
of James. To them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called, mercy unto you, and peace, and love, be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, all these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perishing in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of their own shame, Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how, they, how that they told you 
there should be mocky, mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. So, this book that President Trump held up playing for a certain faction faction over a US presidency over an estate there so this Bible then becomes relevant to many dominions all around the world all around the world as this collapse begins to take effect and as we see these factions fight against each other, and the law change, the law change, this is the harsh reality. Administration is administration, isn't it? Whereas the Holy Ghost finds itself bound to a stick, nothing becomes everything. And that law... We see some major changes in the international spectrum, don't we? In the International Court of Justice, which has existed for quite some time, just going back to the League of Nations, 1919. Does that bring us back somewhere? Does that bring us back somewhere? Uh, lest ye forget. In the morning we shall remember them. A new dawn. Right, so, who's Dawn? Theirs? Yours? What do you remember? Because God said, I know you're not. That, that means you need to work out how to put your sigil down on the, and then turn around and be with it. And only then will God know you, won't he? And then... Exodus 15.3 Deuteronomy 20-4 hmm. Interesting thoughts here as we look forward because the foundation here is in something old, isn't it? In something old, isn't it? And, and it was just us remembering to go back to it, wasn't it? Well, it wasn't about trying to become the leader of something, was it? And without going back, how do you go forward? If you can't remember. If you can't remember, lest you forget. And that's where we come to this deluded game that's been put down on the courtroom record as a delusion. This mind manipulation upon all of you as a people, right? Why does one need more immigration? Is it to help divide and conquer? Is it to help outbalance those that are waking up? These are all harsh realities when the Commonwealth of Australia as a nation of state is founded in the Stone of Remembrance. 
because someone put a stick in the ground. A whole bunch of men, 11,000 in Victoria, 62,000 across the country, went off to die to defend what was around that stick. What was around that stick. And what was around that stick? Well, to the north there was these types of people, and to the west there was these types of people, and to the east there was these types of people. And they were all needed to defend their peoples. So they bound together in defense of something greater than darkness, ignorance, forgetting, plebbing, plebiscitizing. Mm. Plebeian, patrician, patrician, patrician rather than patriarch, administration by people that keep you in the dark, but people that keep you in the dark. So we have to think now on an international stage, South Africa, British Palestine, Israel, Commonwealth of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, England, and this question of Scotland and these 33 degree Freemasons and this Pope, this Papist States, and these moneylenders that Zion created. Now, that's a Rothschild thing, remember? Uh, and they're just the bank. You just have to look at, at the clients they hold. The clients they hold. It's not the bank, it's the clients in the bank. Think about that. So, uh, as we look at this greater estate problem uh, of Australia in demise, demise of the currency 1965 and now eventually the demise of the mind into a deluded state of forgetting. We need to look at the Brereton report. We need to look at Kiskanen versus New South Wales. We need to look at Luke, because if you can't see, God said, I know you're not. So it's pointless, like, playing this legal card game without actually looking because that would make you ignorant. No longer nescient, because you're trying to do something without actually knowing. So you need to now discover, right? Discover. While, while you look at these money lenders in your temple and work out what the old way was. And look behind the veil on what the old way was, because now we're talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and if you want a fancy little tidbit of knowledge, there's a clock in Melbourne, in Victoria, that is in the Queen Victoria Arcade, I think. And you go out the back, and there's a clock in the top of the dome of the arcade, and it's got Sodom and Gomorrah on either side as evil characters, and a clock in the middle with time ticking around. This is the awakening of not letting something fall into demise over time. Not letting something fall into demise over tickety tocks. There's my clocks by the hand of Christ in God. Hmm, interesting thought there too. As the shadow of doubt is lifted. Uh, and the fog of war is dissipated uh, and you discover home and you go holy moly I, I do remembers I do remembers from this veil of fog that oh, I've been living for 75 years ago so you're starting to see this is a fracture worldwide uh, and Australia, monetarily, for its own future, for its own children, doesn't want to fall into the trap of your low nothing. It wants to return to some sort of foundation for 
the next hundred years, doesn't it? For the next hundred years, doesn't it? And that includes our defence across the oceans. That includes our land forces of all the fathers and sons under that Australian imperial crown, knowing what they defend. Knowing what they defend. And that's the interesting thought here. Lineage brought us here. Ancestry brought us here. Right? And a foundation in something all these people in this country believe in comes back here to my stick and my book and my know-how to put that before Justice Lonergan for all of you. I'm hitching a bit that there's people in Parliament looking at the Brereton report right now and thinking, well, we do. What do we do? Well, you decided to play with money lenders and break the rules. You broke the rules. And they're called international war crimes. International war crimes by police, corrective services, forensic mental health, magistrates' courts all around Australia, councils. This goes on. Hospitals. There's a lot of stuff here, and what you defend? You defended a home going from 100 grand to 1.3 million. You defended the price of food going up 50 times in value. You defended nothing. You're the one that helped them squander it all. You're the one that blindly made them, sorry, you're the one that made them blindly squander it all in a deceit and a fraud and an international criminal offence and torture and forced medical procedure and a whole, ho the, a whole host of other international war crimes that include genocide. And this is the harsh reality. The Great Seal of Australia is directly connected to that genocide. To the genocide at law because of this and the foundations in God uh, and the fact that they're administrators of your land and not you that wherein you forgot lest you forget in the morning we remember them so are you going to let this happen or not the, the difficult thing here is your belligerence is going to matter because they're going to attack you if you're belligerent. And my warning to all of you is Gandhi. Go, go and look at Gandhi at the salt mines. Go and look at Gandhi in South Africa with the identification. And try and work out the account. The account. The person. Tubal Cain sold the persons of men. And it's nothing wrong about the account. And you having the account, it's putting that account in debt uh, and allowing that account to go on to the stock market. Tubal Cain traded the persons of men on the stock markets, basically. Uh, and that's okay if it's your town for all of you beneficially together to make a profit for your town, isn't it? But when it becomes a money lender, you're, you're the one paying the bills while they take the value, uh, isn't that what we said in Genesis? So is this now starting to come? David versus Goliath situation with which one of you mentioned in the comments, right? Is very correct because we're this little tiny thing that has this massive amount of power at law because of the situation at hand, the order of things internationally. Has, uh, has allowed us this position at law to be David against this machine, Goliath. Against this massive creditor machine, Goliath, the IMF, and 
for all of this setup that they've pushed upon all these countries over the last 130 odd years. I mean, we've gone from an industrial revolution into a technical revolution, and now they're pushing us into an AI revolution, and they're changing the way we do work in these revolutions. Evolutions, are they? No, they're forced at hand by powers against your will. Against your will. That, that leads you into this false reality of freedom when it becomes a further rat race slavery, doesn't it? Because then it's a very difficult to do anything a different way besides the way you've been provided with. The way you've been provided with. Just think about that for a second. There's no other way than the way someone else has provided you with. Just think about that for a second with the scripture and God and the foundations and Christ and his Holy Ghost and looking at you and your country and your families and moving forward as towns and neighborhoods again and then going forward as the Commonwealth, loyal and in defense of all, everything, all different peoples now, because we're not all in this governance or childhood, and that's where the reality is starting to come for this administrative state around the world as the age of entitlement starts to be over. So this is you starting to realize reality, real, real property. Uh, and this is you starting to look at what's going on internationally with the ability to take Israel before the court like this because it's now lost a, a power, hasn't it? It's lost a power to to pressure and manipulate and that would have detracted and South Africa may not have been able to put forward such a strong argument. So there's a monetary power loss that has allowed uh, a different power to bring forward some sort of attack via law, via the law. But underneath all of this, lies this underlying power of God and the Holy Ghost defined by the stone of remembrance. And this is where a pillar is laid down for a, a people to believe in and be at peace. To be at peace. So drumming up any sort of belligerence would only invite some sort of peacekeeper to come and whoop your stupid ass. And that's okay with me. That's totally okay with me. Because that's the nanny state making sure you're peaceful. You're peaceful. And peace, when it comes to the end of the day, is debt. And debt is contract, and contract is full disclosure, and the failure to do so is fraud and deceit. Fraud and deceit. So to be manipulated as a people and a population out of your entire economy is fraud and deceit, isn't it? Unless you were paying some sort of rat race debt cycle that you were ignorant to, instead of looking at the Holy Ghost and the Holy Scripture and how we defined and laid out these things in time to define the space around you at law, internationally, to stand up as peoples, as peoples of all kinds, in defense of this darkness that they keep bringing on everyone and enslaving everyone in a mental debt situation. 
because they believe this marketing commerce machine of concrete and monstrosities that they just like to build everywhere is the future. Destroying everything you are and all the nice things you could be to replace it with cement, the cocaine of council. And I'll repeat that. Cement is the cocaine of council. You just have to go into any building administrative office in the council and you'll see that everything revolves around the pouring of cement. And this is a problem. You're going to lose every little nice little thing that ever came out of your godly country to be turned into a concrete prison full of cameras and being watched by some superpower that wants to turn you into some sort of full-on slave. Full-on slave. But wherein, this is where I'm telling you, your freedoms aren't in being locked into being dependent in one way of doing things. And this is what the state, uh, under God, has been caught out manipulating you by the mind to do. Which is a crime. A heinous international war crime called a crime against humanity. A crime against the ignorant, in other words. And this is the harsh reality that's becoming the reality as we watched Bill Gates say, all those humans out there, or all those ignorants out there, ignorant to the foundations of God that are manipulated by money men like Bill Gates. Until someone came along with the scripture and said, oh, I found myself in this stone, thank you very much, and I will stand and defend my rights, ecclesiastical and curial, to do so, to do so, on behalf of what has become, by that Pontius Pilate moment of turning up at my house and accusing me of being so, because they said so. They said so. I didn't. They did. No, that's the one thing that you've all come to realise. The power in God and the law and the foundations that were put down in the estate as moneylenders tried to manipulate the temple still remained underneath it all. And they rise with all of you. With all of you remembering, they rise out of these turbulent waters to stand prevalent and strong like a tower, a pillar of your society wherein you can say to these people, ye have committed one heinous criminal offence called a war crime, a Nuremberg style type offence. In America, we would call it a RICO-style offence of fraud and deceit and crimes against humanity and crimes against nature of uh, things like torture and forced medical procedure uh, and unlawful imprisonment and so forth, at which the international world is now circling like vultures like vultures looking to pick at the bones of those that crossed the line yeah, in this international barrage of rules of ignorance. Because those players in Parliament became ignorant and it became an idiocracy and they failed gods and they failed the rules of administration and they went outside of the rules of usufruct as defined in the Hague Conventions, which then put the entire Hague Conventions on the table, which then put the Geneva Conventions on the table, and opened up a plethora of rules in which they were to obey. Obey! Uh, which they stepped outside the bounds of thinking they had the upper hand on God. And God held the entire rule book in his hands, in 
his hands with lineage back to foundations at which were administered in the very first. So as this humidity peaks, we close off by saying, there's no point making this your place, my place. That's your home. It's anchored in the stars. It's your home, at which you return the light to, is it not? And to be in any form outside of the bounds of peace would then make you the aggressor, and he who dies by the sword, he who lives by the sword, dies by the sword. So one must live by the word, right? And it is in that word that you are judged by those that keep you in the dark. And believe you're imperfect, imperfect. Believe you're imperfect because you can't follow simple instructions that are hidden knowledge, hidden knowledge that, that witches in their covens keep in secret, in secret, secret societies of witches. And they're all around you, raping you all for a dollar, instead of looking at the foundations of wealth in a town that gives you all sustenance and substance, substance of men. And that's what we're all lacking, isn't it? So to go out there and be some sort of angry man and pushy commanding everybody around will be detrimental to a community, wouldn't it? Of your homelands, wouldn't it? Where your neighbourhood or your neighbours love thy neighbour. And then to render unto Caesar all that is Caesar's and render unto God all that is God's because it's not a one-sided equation here would mean to know God wherein God told you very clearly that he knew you not until you discovered, until you discovered. So therein lies the problem in that you're all rushing to a means where oh, I would tell you already had it. You're just rushing and rush, rush, trip. The rusty will seize up and fall flat on their face in the mud and they'll find it very difficult to get up. And those that polish their armour a little bit and look at those people around them and start to pour out a little bit of love in that respect, kindness. You know, like there are all these people around you that hurt in different ways, many different ways. Society is a, a corrupted fool that affects the hearts of many, many. So all, all you need to do is open your eyes a little bit more and spread the love, as one would say. It, it's the pay it forward kind of mentality without expecting the cha-ching for the pay it. Because that's the youtube moment, isn't it? the IRL moment of I'm the best because I made it happen. Well, who cares? Do it in the quiet. Do it silently. Do it to those in your neighbourhood. Do it to those all around you. Make everyone's life happier. And rub that off onto them so that they do it to everyone else too. And then eventually we look at nasty people and we look down upon them, don't we? We don't allow them to surface to the top and manipulate do we? Uh, it was that was Voltaire that said, if, evil, uh, if good men do nothing, evil men will rise. And that's what we've allowed to occur by forgetting these foundations of where our community revolved around in a pillar in the first place. To, to raise it up out of these waters of credit, finance and the waves of the stock market crashy, crashy tidal waves that come and wipe you out 
after you've forgotten who you are. And we're lucky that we have these structures around us to help us remember. While dark people manipulate our parliaments, our councils, our police departments, our hospitals, and, and so on, our education systems, our, our curriculum, our laws, our very substance, our custom. Who are we customarily as a people in the customary laws? And these become the realities when Albo calls for more immigration. Why? Does that make us a stronger united force as a people? As a people? United in one stone, one flag? And being sure that we exist for another hundred years as the Commonwealth of Australia on these international waters wherein we watch money lenders go before the International Criminal Court of Justice? Right, that's pretty full on stuff, isn't it? What watching the world accuse those Zionists in your own government of genocide, of genocide, of genocide, uh, after a Brereton report, Brereton report, uh, after a Brereton report. Pretty serious stuff, right? Given that these soldiers have been mocked and defamed and abused and could be put before real hanging of their own lives for taking oaths at the peril of their life, leave the code Article 26, demonstrating Article 55 of the Hague Conventions, which later came 1899 Hague, 1907 Hagues, leading on to the Geneva Conventions on the use of weapons at war and so forth, and the treatment of prisoners at war, I believe until you become the criminals yourselves and no longer nanny. You enslave. You enslave. And you take away liberty and right of man in that mental enslavement, that mental enslavement into this financial and monetary digitized DNA real evil system of where they want to take you where they want to take you, where they want to take you. Now, was killing in the name of, da -da -da, where he said, they want to control you, you do what they make you do. I'll find the video and I'll put the intro at the end of this, da -da -da, and then the link so you can watch the entire thing. Killing in the name of. They use force to make you do what the deciders have decided you must do. They use force to make you do what the deciders have decided you must do. They use force to make you do what the deciders have decided you must do. Sick of work, 